Hello, Ian. Hi, Tracy. We're back again. How lovely. How exciting. Now, I think we're going to talk about one of my favourite things today, aren't we? Which are books for very small people. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and um, what a lovely thing to talk about. And this time of year, we often get a lot of really lovely new releases. And we've we found a few of them. Um, to talk about today but we've there's also some real sort of stone cold classics as well to talk about so mm. do you want to start off or what should we run? um yeah sure so i've got um books with moving parts or, or books with added bits um to just to run through quickly because i think people who might not have ever bought books for babies might not know just um, well, anyone who's not watched a baby with a book <laughs> might be surprised at, at how oral an experience it is. Um, they do chew on them quite a lot. Um, I'm just realizing I didn't bring any bath books across. Um, so I, I always recommend bath books, for instance, because they will stand up to no end of, of chewing. Um, and really, you, you want children to get just used to holding the book in their hands and having the experience of interacting with the pictures and they start mimicking the adult and the motions of looking at the books. Um, we have books with wheels. So this is Speedy Wheels Tractor. I have, um, we have buggy books, books that hang on the side of the buggy so the child can um, not drop it. And they have sort of one word per page with a picture, so not too much to take in. And even a very young child can look at that and recognize, I've seen one of those before, you know, start processing that, that that's the same snake as they've seen in a different picture book. Um, it's worth mentioning that those little buggy books often are companion books to really well-known books. So we've got yeah. Dear Zoo, we've yeah, got, I know yeah. we've got like the tiger who came to tea, you know, all these, um, yeah. or I know that exists, even if we don't have it, they, they often sit as a separate thing, don't they? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. And it's a good point. Well, we've got a Peter Rabbit one up there at the moment. Um, so we also um, have, this is a lovely series. This is, is this my tail? So oh. this elephant, that's not his tail. That's super cute. It is cute. Um, <laughs> You can read so, it to me, Tracy. I'm going to sit here and I can have big red too. <laughs> so um, my tail is a big blue fin, sings whale. Is this my tail? No, that's not his tail. Clearly um, not. Clearly not. So you, you go through the whole book like that. And it's a whole series of Is This My Tail with different animals' tails. So whose is it? Um, it's a chameleon. Oh. So it's a way of learning about the animals and thinking through the process of, I've seen one of those before. I've seen a or maybe not actually seen a panda, but there's something that doesn't quite look right about that. So it's just a, a bit of fun. Um, so, and then finally with books with extra bits, we love this series. These are more expensive than the others. It, it, it combines the um, tactile experience that people really know well of the That's Not My series. So that's, that's Not My Hedgehog its ears are too fluffy, so that they're touchy-feely. Um, but it actually adds sound elements. So don't tickle the lion. When you actually tickle it, switch it on, you make it roar. Oh, wow. Don't, don't tickle the buffalo. You might make it grunt. So a lot of people don't like sound books, but I think if they're tastefully done, they're not that bad, actually. So these are £12.99, and this is Don't Tickle the Lion. And we also have um, Don't Tickle the Hippo in stock. And I know that next year, Don't Tickle the Bear is going to be published. So that's, that's, that's that gets us started. Oh, what how you... lovely. Right, well... Let's also start with something for really young children. Um, well, so I I have a son who's now about 20 months and I've had this book since he was a baby. You can see it's very well loved. We talked a little bit about treatment of books. We're very careful, but, you know, 
things happen. Um, this book, we know that we have customers in the shop who buy this anytime anyone they know has a baby. And it is one of those books. For me, it's it's this and Peepo by the Allbergs. You know, they're just, they're wonderful classics. This is a book for children who want a bit of interactivity without an iPad. So as we go through, there's magic in this bare brown tree. Tap it once and turn the page to see. And then, so as we go through, it's a story of the, the cycle of a tree as it goes through the year. And it's um, really lovely. The children can find the point of difference on each page. You can look for the apples and the bees and it's winter and you can make all the noises. And it's really, it's really lovely. Young children like to just look at the tree. I've noticed that with Casper, so my little boy who's 20 months, he's in the past couple of months, he's really started going for the actions on the page. So I think if you want the actual fully interactive experience, you're probably looking about 18 months upwards to actually get them to understand that that's what they need to do. Um, but it's a really lovely hardback board book and I'm a huge fan of these for children under two because they don't tear as as much as the um you know as, as a regular picture book so these are really lovely sturdy options and there are a lot of books that offer this actually as a format as opposed to the, the paper ones so yeah a, a lot of stories that people enjoy are available in board back format so it's worth asking actually but I love to have the magic tree too that's my favorite children's book and I when we were doing the um story time sessions um which was just basically aimed at anyone who still enjoys a, a picture book there were children of sort of six and seven who crowded round that when I read mm. that and you know you would think that's way too old but they love it the simplicity really appeals mm it's it's really lovely it's it's really nice so yeah absolutely this one if you don't know it um so we're hoping to give you an idea of some books to to think about if you want to move past the ones that a lot of people already have so the gruffalo and we're going on a bear hunt and you know dear zoo these are all absolute classics and they are classics for a reason but there are so many other options that it's nice to actually be able to share them um Going on to children's books for kids who are a little bit older. Um, now, I'm going to say something extremely controversial at this point, and I'm sure the, the world is going to take a deep inhalation and I'm going to get no end of grief, but I'm not the world's biggest Gruffalo fan. Oh, but I've discovered that I am a huge fan of Julia Donaldson when she gets Sarah Ogilvie to do the illustrations. And this book is not the new book that I'm actually going to talk to you about. This is one of our favourites at home. And it's about a dog who, who goes into schools to hear people, children read. And then she all, one day all the books are stolen and she has to go and sniff them out. And the illustrations are wonderful. They're, they're really, really great. And it's Julia Donaldson's prose. So this is Julia Donaldson who's written, um, uh, yeah, The Gruffalo and Zog and Tiddler and, you know, Snail and the Whale and all the books that the kids absolutely love. But it's a slightly different take because of the different illustrator. Now, Sarah Ogilvie and Julia Donaldson have just published their new offering which is the hospital dog now it's currently just in hardback so it's a bit more pricey i think it's 12.99 at the moment something like that That's so okay. it's it's a little bit more than a, a standard um paperback version um but this one is a similar idea so this is dot and dot goes into here um to goes into the hospital to cheer up sick children so here is a Dalmatian called Dot. Is she quite ordinary? No, she is not. And it's really lovely. Um, so this is a really nice choice for children who are a little bit older. Casper actually loves this and will sit through it, but he has no choice at home because I read it to him whether he's listening to it or not. <laughs> um, but I think um, his older brother, who's seven, will happily sit and listen to it. So I would, I would think from you know, tod late toddlers, if they are into books, right up through, this is a really nice option. And with, whether it is Schleffler or with Sarah Ogilvie, there's always loads to see in the illustrations and lots to talk about. 
in the books too. So that's a new one. Um, I really want to talk about diversity in children's books. And that's something mm -hmm. I've been really conscious of this year um, with the Black Lives Matter stuff. And uh, I think also living where we do, um, trying to encourage conversations at home about people who come from all different places and look all different different ways and all do all different sorts of things and there's one illustrator who does this really well actually called Lauren Tobia and now we've got three books to talk about all illustrated by the same person so in some respects it's a really bad conversation about diversity to be having um, the first one I want to talk about is um, a series from Walker. Now, these are really nice intermediary books between board books for babies and, and books which are slightly older. They're in a, a sort of a medium. I don't know what you'd call this format, Tracy. You'd know. The paper's very thick. It's almost like cardboard, but it's not a board book. No, I don't know. These are um, the Walker First Experiences series. Now, there are four books in the series, and they're about Billy and B. And they're two friends and they go do stuff and they go and have adventures and they experience things that a lot of children will be experiencing. So um, they go to the farm, they go to a city farm, they go to nursery, they go to the seaside, they go swimming together. And there's always some sort of minor catastrophe. So um, whether it's Billy doesn't actually want to stroke the lambs and it's freaking him out a bit or B goes into the sea and the waves splash to her and she doesn't like it, you know all these sorts of things that um, that kind of happen to children. It's done in really gentle verse. There's lovely messages about friendship. And I don't know whether this is me being a bit sort of hormonal and just really valuing my female friends, but there's some really <laughs> lovely things here about like this lovely picture. So while, while Bee's mum's having a paddle, look, Billy's mum's looking after the baby. I just I just love it and it's, it's really really sweet so this is a nice series to know about um, for those sort of first experiences um, and then you have another one don't you a board book for babies it's also illustrated by um, Lauren Tobias. Um, are yeah. you talking about Tin Little Fingers? Yeah. That's actually Helen Oxenbury. Oh, it's Helen Oxenbury. Right. I stand completely corrected. No, no, no. She's, she's um, been with us for so many years um, so we, my children grew up on um, um, Say Goodnight by Helen Ox Oxenberry. I had to recite all the um, all the words of the whole book in my mind to remember what it was called. Um, so Ten Little Fingers and Ten Little to Toes. Um, Casper has this, doesn't he? No, he doesn't. I thought he did. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, oh. I, I love this because it's got Mem Fox's beautiful... Um, rhyme and it's very gentle um mm. the the rhyme really works well the um and it's just about how babies are the same the world over so you get there was one little baby who was born far away and another who was born on the very next day oh and all the babies look different and both oh, of these babies it. as everyone knows had 10 mm. little fingers and 10 little toes and it just progresses through how babies are born in different places. So there was one little baby who was born in a town and another who was wrapped in an eider down. And it just goes right through to every single baby has 10 little fingers and 10 little toes. So we're all alike, however different the places are that we come from. I love it. It's my That's new favorite awesome. book. And I would say a plug for Mem Fox as well, because she writes, um, there's a book called... Um, Wilfred, Wilfred Gordon McDonald Partridge, which is about a boy of about maybe three or four who lives next door to a care home where the patients have a dementia and he befriends them and he, he finds a way of having a meaningful relationship with the dementia patients oh, wow. um, and um, helps them to start recalling some memories and it's a beautiful friendship and about the boy understanding what's going on as well. So both of these, Helen Oxbury and Mem Fox are really worth looking up. Um, but this book is a book that we all need to have on our shelves, whether we have well, a baby in our lives or not. Clearly I'll ask you to order me a copy then and <laughs> I'll click and click 
kept it from you between the hours of 10 and 2 when I'm next in Wyndham. Yes, and please. it comes in. Um, the one you're holding here, ah, I am... I discovered her, actually, I discovered this because in the back of this book, there yeah, was yeah. a plug for her other books. And I was like, oh, we'll have a look at those. This is a series by Atanuke, and it's illustrated by Lauren Tobia. And Atanuke is a poet. And she is, um, oh, and I'm going to get this wrong. I think she's from Nigeria, but she now lives in Pembrokeshire, which is an interesting um shift um, oh good well done me um now the series of books um there's two picture books there's anna hibiscus and then there's this one called splash and it's about a little girl who grows up in nigeria with her family she lives in this little compound with her extended family and her dad is nigerian her mum is canadian so they, she's kind of a little uh, in a mixed race um, girl, but actually that doesn't really matter. The, the point of the stories is, is it's just about her family and about uh, the sort of stuff she does um, in her day to day life and how she just finds absolute joy in the things that other people don't notice. So in um, Anna Hibiscus, which is the first one, she just doesn't know what to do with herself because she's so happy. And so she asks all her family members, um, what do they do when they're happy? And um, it's just a real celebration of life. The one you're holding, Tracy, is they, go, they all go to the beach and um, they, uh, she just wants to splash in the waves with somebody, but everyone's busy doing other stuff. So she just goes and does it herself. And um, there's a wonderful page there when her cousins who have these wonderfully improbable names are all on their mobile phones. And they say to, she, I forget what they're called. Have you got common it there? Sense. Go. Clarity and common sense. Clarity and common sense are on their mobile phones and like, yeah, we're, we're not going to splash in the waves. We're too old for that now. And so they're, they're all on their phones. And it's just, you know, anything you, you might think you, you know about um, life in Africa and that sort of stereotypical mould. It's just, yes, it's just family, wherever family is. It looks um, like they so, all find, see how much fun she's having, though, and realise the error of their ways and join her. They do. And so in the end, they all go down. So her mom and her dad and grandmother and grandfather and the aunties and the cousins. And they all come into the sea and they all pile in and they have a great time. And um, it's, it's a really great book. But what I love about her prose is that she is a poet. So um, it reads slightly differently to some other things in the same way that Julia Donaldson's stuff is. I'll be with you in just one second. So, do you want to carry on talking? So, I'll carry on talking for just a okay. moment. <laughs> um, so in the same way that um, Julia Donaldson has a really great way with words and that very uh, regular rhyming, so does Atanuke. It has a really great way of describing where she is. And it's um, really gentle and thoroughly recommended. So these are just some books that we've noticed that um, we wanted to share with you. Um, as Tracy said, we are open for click and collect between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. from Monday to Saturday. If you would like to order a book from us, you can do so by calling the shop. And Tracy, I've forgotten the telephone number, so you'll have to tell us what that is. It's 01953-603-663. Or you can get us on email at orders at ketsbooks.co.uk. There we go. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll go and serve my customer. Thank you for talking us through your favorite baby books. That's my pleasure. Okay. Lovely, and, um, lovely. Yeah, lovely to talk to you again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>